Starch is a carbohydrate we eat made of glucose, and starch is broken down into glucose in the body. And it is the enzyme amylase that binds the starch molecule that breaks down starch into glucose. So it is amylase that breaks down starch into glucose. Foods that contain starch include potato, rice, bread, and pasta. And the test for starch is iodine. Iodine is an orange liquid that when you place it on starch, it turns the iodine blue. So remember, starch turns iodine from an orange to a blue-black. That is from an orange to a blue-black color. So now you get your well plate or your tray of wells or whatever your teacher calls it. And then you get your iodine. And then you drop one drop of iodine in each of the wells. So you must drop only one drop in each of the wells. This is a control variable. So you remember to pipette one drop of iodine into each well. So now we have to prepare our amylase solution in different pHs. In this scenario, it's going to be pH 4. So you add 2 centimeters cubed of the buffer solution, 2 centimeters cubed of the amylase solution into a measuring cylinder. You then mix that solution together. You now have amylase enzyme in a pH 4 buffer solution. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Now you have your amylase in the pH buffer solution. You now have to transfer two centimeters cubed of the starch into a test tube. So you must transfer the starch into a test tube. And now you're going to transfer two centimeters cubed of the amylase in the pH 4 buffer solution into the starch. Okay, you're going to transfer the amylase into the starch. At this point here, you start the timer. So after 20 seconds, you prepare one drop of the starch and amylase solution into one well, and you'll see the color change of the iodine. And you do this until it no longer turns blue. So every 20 seconds, you prepare one drop of the starch amylase solution into the iodine. Because if it's turning blue-black, that means there is still starch present in the solution. So there's an in-between stage where the iodine will turn kind of a bricky red color. And this is when the starch does not turn the iodine blue because the starch is partially broken down, but not completely. So we're fully expecting the next well to remain yellow. So when the starch amylase and the buffer solution have been added to this well, the iodine has remained yellow. This is because all of the starch has broken down. And you can now record how long it took for the amylase in this specific pH to break down the starch completely into glucose. So remember that when there's no color change, so when the iodine remains orange, that is when all the starch has been broken down into glucose. So now you must record the time it took for amylase to break down the starch into glucose. And each of the world represents 20 seconds, so this is 160 seconds. We're now going to repeat the experiment for a different pH. So this time we're going to mix the amylase enzyme in pH 1 buffer solution using the same volume as previously because they're control variables. We then place 2 centimeters cubed of the amylase in pH 1 buffer solution into a test tube and then add 2 centimeters cubed of the starch solution into the test tube. We now get our well plate with one drop of iodine in each well. Then we press the start button once the starch and amylase has been mixed. And then every 20 seconds, we add one drop of the amylase starch and pH solution into each well. So as you can see here, the iodine remains blue. This is because the starch is not being broken down. And if you need to carry on to another plate, you do. 
as you can see here, the starch is still not being broken down because the iodine remains blue. At this point, you've got to give up because something could have happened to the enzyme. So let's count how many seconds we have been going on for. So every well in the plate is 20 seconds. So this will mean we have gone on for about 600 seconds. So there's no breakdown of starch. But why is this? This is because at pH 1, the active site of the enzyme amylase will have denatured. That's what it should look like, a fully formed active site. But at pH 1, the active site will have denatured. Therefore, the starch molecule can no longer bind the amylase active site. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Visit kscience.com for more free videos, worksheets, and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.